All right, we're back again for blind video number three and we're doing cats today. I have been doing a few cats for the last few days in my sketch, in my daily sketchbook. So, um, yeah, so there was, and this was the one that I did this morning. Obviously I spent more time on each one of these cats. Um, approximately about 10 minutes. This one was 15 minutes because it was quite a difficult pose. And yeah, so I think we will continue with the cats theme close that up because the, <coughs> because the last one is going to be heads which is going to be a lot of fun because I imagine those ones will turn out quite hilar hilariously terrible but anyway um, so these were our past ones our past stripe line drawings I'll just do a quick flip through those which were really interesting results and I can see how someone could make their sole career just doing these types of blind drawings because some of these I would love to have on my wall but the thing is with blind drawings you really can't replicate them um, more than once so I don't know how you would do that but I'm sure someone's made a career out of it somewhere and these were just some extras that I did um, but yeah I could see some of these being up on someone's wall as pieces of artwork. You know, ones like this, and this one, and this one. So we are going to do the cats today. So get prepared, download the reference sheet. I've actually added a, um, another cat on here. So the reference sheet file is a pure ref file and it has all of the references. And when I say all of the references, I mean every everything that we've done so far and what we will do in the future as well. So go and download that or grab four of your own references. I'll just have to try and remember to update the file. So what, what do we need? We need paper. Just printer paper will do. And we need a pen. So it has to be a pen, a nice big chunky pen. You can use a texter. I'm not using a texter because I can't stand the sound, <laughs> the scratchy sound of the texter. So I am using a pen that I actually don't like because it bleeds through and it runs when it's wet. So I'm using it up because I don't like to waste things. So we will start with the first cat. Now I did pick these poses because I thought they made some really good silhouettes. So we're going to think about where uh, on the cat that we want to start and I think I will start on the head. Um, I usually start in the head area, but you can start anywhere you like on the cat. And remember, once you put your pen to the paper that you cannot look at your paper. This is totally blind. So wherever you land with your pen is where it's, it's going to be. So you can go over the lines a couple of times. I've done that in the past and I quite like the result. So, all right, pencils on the paper. We've started. So I'm just doing the top of the head and I'm going to try and slow down because when I slow down, I seem to do a, a slightly better job. So we're going around this eye. You can lift your pen off the paper. I've said that before, if you want to. I'm trying not to, for no particular reason other than I just like the continuous line. Just trying to slow down because you will feel yourself trying to rush ahead and this is the time where you just say you know we're just going to just do this slowly methodically adventurously if you want to so I'm going to do the nose now A little nostril the other nostril the other side of the nose and we'll just come down to the mouth and I'll have to do the underside of the head and the little chin all right now let's do the neck down the leg This goes a fair way down. Just 
do that foot. So I might just do, there's, a, there's part of a foot that's behind, so I might just do that as well. And I'm just going across, using my pen across the forms, and I'm going to go up the inside of that leg. Try not to let my eye, my hand rush ahead. And you'll find yourself sometimes you don't know where to go, but so in those times, sometimes I'll just go over where I've been before and I know that I haven't completed this, this foot, so I'll do that now. the little toes. We'll do this side of the leg. And up around the neck. Down the back. Now I've made a mistake there because I stopped. I stopped for a second because I was actually wasn't following my hand. Let's just complete this foot. We'll go down there, put the belly in, and let's just draw through and put that foot that's on the far side, the back leg. You can see some, I guess, um, shadow lines and guidelines where, where the muscles are. Just trying to do the tail, not worried about the fur. And I think that's it, let's have a look. Okay, that's very, very cryptic. The head. Wow. That's, that's actually kind of a little bit um, unsettling, which is a surprise. I've not, wonder, I've not done one that's a little bit unsettling, and I think it's because of this. You can see the form of the nose in here and the eye. I put the pupil in this one, but I didn't put it in this one. And the rest of the head is over here. So it's really disconnected, and I think because it makes it look like the jaw is a, what do you call it? Overbite, underbite? I'm not sure. Look how skinny that neck is. But then we've got the long body, and that part's actually not too bad. All right, so that's number one. Interesting results, interesting results. Did not come out how I expected it to come out. I thought it would be more cohesive, but then sometimes when you're drawing blind, you can have really surprising results. All right, so let's get ready for the next one. Very, very abstract. Let's put that aside. All right, so the next one is the kitty cat that's stretching. And I might start down the bottom here. I, I like to start with the head, but I don't want the head to be disconnected like... Oh, God. Holy shit. Alexa just activated and scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> God, I'm here alone in my house and all of a sudden a voice <laughs> comes from another room that scared the absolute living shit out of me. Oh. All right, hang on a minute. <laughs> panic stations, panic stations. Whew. Whew. Okay, yeah, let's just, oh God, I've got to let the adrenaline dissipate <laughs> through my body. Gosh. Far out. Far out, man. That literally scared the bejesus out of me. Okay. All right. Next one. We'll do the stretching kitty cat. So I, I, I can feel the adrenaline leaving my system. It's just a weird feeling trying to actually concentrate while that's happening. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Yeah. So let's Concentrate. I want to do the head, but I want to try and make the head more cohesive. So I think I might go outside the whole entire head first and then do the inside because I think just doing one side and then the other side is what led the previous one to be disconnected. So let's try that. 
So I think this is going to be in the bottom right hand side of the page, but I need to leave room for the legs. So I think we'll start here and we'll just start, where shall we start? All right, we'll just, we'll start with this, with this ear on this side. And just use some of the fur as a guide. across the top of the head and now we can get into some of the inside so I'm just gonna I'm using some of those marks the fur marks to hopefully get me inside the cat space <laughs> need to complete my sentences and I'm just looking for ways to move around Do the other eye. We've got the little stripy bits down the side, so we'll put that in because I want to do the nose. One nostril, the other nostril. Just go around that again. Down, chin. Okay, let's do this paw. stretched out. Oh, I must be near the edge of the paper. Um, not sure. I'll try to do one, one of the claws. It's a little bit difficult to see. Do the other nail. Come down here. So I think we'll go down the outside of the other paw. You can choose what to include and what not to include. To the inside. Alright, so we'll go around the outside now, the shoulders. I'm wondering how... No, oh, I think I'll... I'm just wondering how to do the shoulders. I might just go across if I can. I'm going to go up and do the body. tail the back side a little bit of his hip there probably shouldn't have put that in but that's fine and the back leg Bit of fur here. I can't think I'm done. Okay. That's kind of cute. There's a bit of a mess going on here. I think I tried to put too much detail in. But that's that's nice. I think that's that's quite nice. That's cute. So that was number two. Yeah, I think it's better when I do parts as a whole and not do one side of the face and then another side of the face to end up with this horror show. That is quite horrific, but in a good way, not in a bad way. But yeah, this little kitty's cute. A little bit more cohesive than that previous one. All right, so 
I actually really like that. I like that. I thought it'd be nice to have a series, like a just a small series of of these done on proper proper paper with maybe a brush pen and have like a series of I don't know five or six five or six of them across your wall. You know, just little little ones. Alright, next one is our is our cat that's cleaning itself. Now this one I picked, I have drawn this cat before in one of my previous sketch morning sketches and I really enjoyed the pose. So that's why I put it in because of the toes. The silhouette isn't probably as strong as the others and there's a lot of internal parts like one of the horses we did last time. So this one is a little bit of a step up in the challenge and that's what's going to be great about it and hopefully we'll get a wild result. So I'm just trying to think where I'm going to start. I think I'm going to start with the head again and the head is I would say probably let's let's put the head here. All right pencils on the paper so I'm just going to go around the outside what I can see put that far ear in go slow down there's an eye in there I don't know is this picture is a little bit blurry but just do the best that you can All right, so now we need to get over to that ear. So what I might do is I'm, I'm just going to travel the pen over. Now the ear is facing down. And he's got some of these lines on his head. So let's put some of those in. It goes down into the forehead to the nose. So then we end up over this ear again. And now I can do that arm um, that's on the side. fur here going down generally going down in this direction you might cross over inside because I can see stripes and I want to capture those as well as I go down right. still need to get the whole leg in so probably going over this too many times but We'll see, we'll see. Now the foot. Put a little toe bean in. The other little toe bean. And I barely see that one there. Alright. Let's go on the inside. His arm. And there's some marks there that we can use, so I'll just use those. Actually just go up and connect that to where I think the head is and come back down. Let's do that paw. Alright, so we're down here. Let's put the tail in. Just putting some of those marks. Right, so we need to do this leg, this chicken leg. The other toe. <laughs> I 
We need to get inside for that little pull pad. And now we need to go down. That's the end of his foot. Was that a fur there? And up around the head. Alright. Oh wow. Okay. See, sometimes the, result, the results can really surprise you. I love that. That is absolutely beautiful. And this is the why, reason why I chose this reference. Otherwise, this reference isn't very um, good. It's not very clear now that I've zoomed in on it. <laughs> but yeah, I love that. That's, that's crazy. The head's a little, a little bit sort of caved in there. And the tail really comes out. Like the perspective of it seems to be, the, or not perspective, the foreshortening of it seems to seems to work, and I think that's because I put those in. The same with this leg. Yeah, I think that is quite quite a um, a good result. It seems to me that doing doing the shapes, the parts together, makes it seem a little bit makes it come out a little bit more cohesive, so that you don't get lost in the picture so much. I'm noticing because that's not as disconnected as remember the first one with the first head where I didn't really do that together. So let's put that aside. Love the little toe beans. All right, so this is the one that I changed. I swapped out because I wanted something because I realized that I've got two that were just sitting. And while I do make good silhouettes, I wanted to try something. Up, up the difficulty again, once again, just a little bit more. So I picked a, another one which, with what I think is a good silhouette, but it is an active pose. Um, all right, so we need to think about how we want to start with this one. Again, I'll be starting with the head, but I'm just trying to take a moment just to see how I'm going to travel. All right, so that I think I think we need to put the head up here. Oh, yeah, I'll start behind the ear. Okay. Pen is on the paper. Just doing the outside contour of the head so that I can at least hopefully get that somewhat where it should be. Just going across the body, put that little bit of a neck in. I want to get over to where the face is, where that eye, where I think that eye should be. Hopefully the nose is there. And these cat markings are actually quite handy to use as guides. All right, so now we're going to put this pour in. So I'm just going to go and use the cat's markings. So hopefully I'm on the outside again. That's a big long line. It feels like a really long line. I'm gonna ignore the tail for now. I'm actually gonna ignore the the cat's nails as well because I think that just put too much detail in. All right, on the inside of the leg. You can see that hip pelvis part. So let's just go down from here. Hopefully I'll have space left on my paper for this because it feels like I'm getting awfully close to the bottom.
just uh, using that marking. Still need to put this this arm in. So I can see the elbow is here. So we'll go underneath. Let's put this paw in. Actually, he's got little toe beans. I didn't put them in, so let's just. and keep track of what we're doing. All right, let's go finish the arm. Go back up to where the head should be. Whoops. Experiment and put some of these marks in. Obviously I'm not going to be drawing every hair but there's marks here from the colour of the cat. Let's see if I can get over. Well, oh, I've lost myself a little bit here. And the arm has two little bands around it. All right, I think I, I think I should stop. Okay. What was this number four? Well, I think I got the action of it. I lost a little bit of the cat here. I probably <laughs> forgot to probably forgot to do that. Cheating. It's yeah, that is cheating. That is cheating. I oh, look how little the paw is. <laughs> Wow, this this leg is quite big, but that makes sense because it's the leg that's got the most weight on it, so that makes sense. And I think keeping the parts together really helped make it a little bit more cohesive. So yeah, there are our four blind drawings for today of cats. Let me bring them out. So that was three and four. I love this one. I do like this one. I just wish that paw had been more separated from the head because that would have made a really great drawing as well. And then we've got one and two. This one is really surprising. I'm surprised at how together this one came out and how this one, oh, I don't know. This, it's, it, this is truly interesting. It looks horrific. At first glance, it just looks like a monster. But when you look at it, <clears throat> and we continue to look at it and look a bit deeper, you can see that it's just, um, it's like the head's been, what do you call it? When you have food that's been disassembled, deconstructed, that's it. That's the word I'm looking for. It's like the head has been de deconstructed. So you've got the chin, you've got the nose, you've got the eyes. So I hope you tried this as well and was able to follow along. And if you haven't, if you haven't yet, do give it a try, because you can get really surprising results. Because you can get your results can be both shocking, hor horrifying, like this one, and the next one can be as cute as a button like this one. Even with the mess of the paws down here, I still think that is quite cute. And that one's quite good too. I think that I love the paw. I really love that paw. I think that makes the picture. And we were able to get the the direction of the face, the way the face is, quite well on that, I thought, which is surprising because I thought that would be really difficult. Even though the head's not a round shape, you can still tell that it's it's facing downwards. So that I think that went quite well. And then our last one, which is a really dynamic action pose for a cat. I quite like it. I do wish this paw had been more separated from the head. But I, you know, this this tiny little paw with its little toe beans. And you can see the shape of the head here and the ears. The shape of that ear is quite surprising, if you can see it behind that. Because I, I feel that the shape of the he ear and with the rest of the head is quite, is, is more accurate than what I would have thought it would be. Yeah, so those are our drawings today. Please try it out 
and try and do it for yourself and see how you go. And it's just really good because I think that using blind, doing blind drawings semi, at least semi regularly. I mean, I'm, I've been doing it um, quite regularly for these past couple of weeks because I'm decided to make some videos on it. Um, and I find that parts of the blind drawing process seeps into my sketching process as well because then I don't have to be continually looking up and down, up and down, up and down between the reference and the thing that I'm drawing. I can. I can look at my reference and just have a little bit more faith in that my pen, my hand, will do its best to try and transfer what I see down onto the paper because of these blind drawing exercises. I guess when you're looking at your sketch all the time, when you're actually in the physical moment of sketching, you can see, you can see that you're not doing it quite right, but you can't really quite fix it. And if you take that away, and just say, okay, well, I'm not going to look at what I'm drawing because this part is causing me trouble. I'll just look at my reference and I'll just blind draw this part. You can be actually quite surprised at how it turns out and it gives you a more clear indication of where, of, of how to fix the problem of the part that you're actually trying to draw. At least that's what I found. I am starting to, now that I've been doing this semi-regularly, I am starting to use that technique a little bit more in some of my sketches especially with the really hard hard poses of animals where it's just I just can't seem to get it and I just have to let it go because whatever I'm doing is not working me looking at it and trying to figure it out for whatever reason isn't working so I just have to let it go and then just look at my reference and just follow my reference without looking at my drawing and then after I've done that look down and see what it is and say oh okay well alright I can see that I can see how this is a better leg than what I had actually tried to do. It doesn't always work, but the more you do it, like with anything else, the more you practice, the better you become at it. And that's part of learning our skills. So the hardest thing I think with blind drawing is to actually slow down because you really, you really do need to slow down. So anyway, the best thing about these exercises, I think, is that it's not something that you normally do and therefore it can inject a little bit of fun and a little bit of curiosity into your, your sketching and drawing and painting practice. And that little bit of variety really helps to keep you interested in your craft and building those skills. And while doing something fun, you are still building skills like hand-eye coordination and just learning to let go because that's a skill too. All right then, so look, we've got one more. Actually, I've, I've decided to do two more videos. I'm actually gonna, we've got the heads to do next time. And I wrote it down here so I don't forget. Bonus video I'm gonna do after that is blind drawing with no reference. So I don't know how that's gonna go. I, I guess I'll just close my eyes. <laughs> But I just thought it might be an interesting experiment. All right, I'll catch you next time for the heads. Download the references and uh, give it a shot in your own time. I would love to see you next time in the next video. Keep drawing, everybody. Have a great day.